Are you looking for the perfect gift for the nerdy pop culture fan in your life? How about an Ask Me Another ticket pack? Ten tickets good for any Bell House show through the end of 2017. More information at amatickets.org. Earlier this month, at Susie Susan tweeted, downloaded the NPR One app after being told for the 1,000th time by an at NPR podcast, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Hashtag insert shame face here. Don't wait like Susie did. NPR One is ready to make driving, cleaning the house, or your post-holiday escape even better. Find NPR O-N-E on your app store. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the theater at Ace Hotel in Los Angeles, California, it's NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia, Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton, and here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan Colton. We have such a great show for you. You know, being a New Yorker, it's always humbling to come out to L.A. because compared to you, we feel very pale, mean, and fat. So I'm hoping you guys will be dumb because if you're smart too, it's going to be a very depressing flight back. (laughs) We already know our contestants are brilliant. They are waiting with their headshots and a short mammoth monologue. Soon to be playing our nerdy games, but only one will emerge as our big winner. And we are taking advantage of being on the best coast. We are delighted to have some amazing guests from Comedy Bang Bang, Weird Al Yankovic, and from Independence Day Resurgence, Jeff Goldblum and Micah Monroe. Let's meet our first two contestants. Dorian Frankel, you're a casting director, but were once a shoe model. That is correct. Okay, so (laughs) what is it about your feet that make them better than all other feet? Um, Well, look at them. I know. Well, it's radio. Um, I'm a perfect size 7, which is not normally the sample size, but in this case it was. Uh, They measured all our feet. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a meaty foot, however, so that was why I ended up losing the job eventually. Wait a second. You need to have a meaty foot. Uh, Meatier than mine. Okay. (laughs) So they said, can you add another couple pounds to your feet? And I couldn't. (laughs) I understand. Yeah. I understand. It's, that sounds like a pretty great job, though. It was fun. Your opponent is Drew Green. You're a cartoon artist and a writer. That is a great job. I love my job. You're very talented. So I'm sure everyone wants that job. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sure you're constantly dealing with people coming up to you going, oh, I can draw and write as a full-time job. How do I do that? Actually, mostly it's just like passionate Tumblr kids. So what do you tell these uh, youngins when they want advice on um, how to be you or better? How to be me. Grow a beautiful beard. Grow no, beard. The, 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 <laughs> the actual advice I give is um, draw every day and live life, which is well, so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know you mentioned your beard, and I'm just going to take a second to say this. I don't know if it's the light, but I feel like your beard is sparkling. It is. It's it's sparkly. Are you a vampire? Okay, okay. (laughs) Yes, and also, I put Vaseline and pomade in it. (laughs) All right, let's get to your game. Your game is called Sight Seething. From the La Brea Tar Pits to the Venice Boardwalk, Los Angeles is just chock full of disappointing tourist attractions. (laughs) But guess what? So is the rest of the world, at least according to the internet. Yay! So in this game, Jonathan Colton and I will read some real one-star reviews (laughs) of famous destinations, and you just have to identify the location. So you're going to buzz in to answer, and the winner is going to move on to our final round at the end of the show. Here we go. Looking down into a big hole is, in my experience, a bore. By the end of it, I was glad to be back on the bus heading back to Vegas. Mm. Big Big hole hole near Vegas. (laughs) Dorian. The... It's a dam. It's a dam. It's the... Hanson Dam? Oh. I think you guys think we are smarter than... (laughs) Drew, do you know the answer? I don't. Largest (laughs) hole you can think of. (laughs) 
Um, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Who, who knows the answer? The Grand Canyon. It's only going to get worse, Drew. Yep, it really oh. is. Oh, oh, my God. Let's see how this goes. If you have seen other mogul architecture, you will recognize every pattern. So, it's a little bit boring. Agra itself was a little rough around the edges. Dorian. The Taj Mahal. That is correct. It felt like a very artificial hike. Walk to Geyser, look at Geyser, take photos, repeat. There's always queues going in and out of the entrances. A couple of times there were traffic jams due to buffalo crossing. In the end, it's all just rocks and water. Dorian. Old Faithful. Yes, absolutely. We'll take that. Oh. Or Yellowstone. Oh, oh. In the end, isn't it all just rocks and water? I don't know if that's fair. If you're lucky. <laughs> Good place to learn about history, King Ramses, etc. But that's about it. It's dirty. It's boring. It's just blocks on top of blocks. <laughs> there were camel droppings everywhere. Dorian. Great Pyramids. That's correct. <laughs> I like that summary of history. King Ramses, etc. Etc. That's all of it. The rest of it. Yeah, you know, it happened. The Peruvian guides are very nice and friendly, but you have to be a mountain goat to enjoy it. The stone steps are very steep, and it's overcrowded with tourists. Drew. Oh, um, the Az oh, Machu Picchu. Yes! Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, this is your last clue. Go there, take a picture, and leave. <laughs> <laughs> that should be there's the beginning more. There's to more. <laughs> <laughs> Go there, take a picture, and leave. Unless you are watching The Changing of the Guard. Nothing to see. You will not see the queen poke her head out of the window. <laughs> Possibly the cleaning lady. Dorian. Buckingham Palace. That's right. Puzzle guru Archung, how did our contestants do? Looks like Dorian is the world traveler. Congratulations, you're moving on to the final round at the end of the show. I don't think so. Let's meet our next two contestants. Vivian Liao, you're a high school science teacher at an all-girls school. That's correct. But wait, after dropping out of a molecular biology PhD program. <laughs> That's also true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no applause. No applause for that. No applause. <laughs> what happened in that PhD? You went that far, and then you were like, no, I'm quitting. What happened? It's surprisingly depressing. <laughs> Molecular biology? A PhD program. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about being a high school teacher that makes it, it sticks for you? I actually relate to them a lot. They like to eat Cheetos with um, <laughs> chopsticks at my school, and I've started doing that. <laughs> so you don't get the dust on your hands. Your opponent is Emma Jensen. You are a general contractor and restore antique furniture. I do. <laughs> and I am. You can't even believe it. It's a little weird, man. <laughs> <laughs> you have great skills. Do you watch uh, those home renovation shows on HDTV oh. and just curse them out? Yes. That. Really? Yes. It's They're a, the bane of our existence. Because everyone thinks you can do everything in five seconds? Yes. Apparently they come in and they film for like a week, mm -hmm. and then the real contractors come in and tear it all out. Because <laughs> none of the plumbing works and none of the electrical works. They just like, it's like a showroom in Home Depot. Yeah. And then they come in and spend the next six months doing it the right way. Okay. <laughs> you get to play one of our favorite games. It's called This, That, or The Other. It's a staple. 
Here's how it works. We're going to give you the name of something, and you have to tell us which of three categories it belongs to. Jonathan Colton, please tell us what are the categories. In today's Los Angeles edition, <laughs> the categories are yoga poses, <laughs> hairstyles, and dance moves. That's right. Buzz in to answer. If you're wrong, your opponent can steal. So remember, just tell us, is it a yoga pose? Is it a hairstyle? Or is it a dance move? Here we go. The rapper sword. Vivian. Yoga. That is the most violent yoga. <laughs> Sorry, Emma, can you steal? Hairstyle. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> no, the rapper sword is not. It is a dance. Oh. I know, who would know? Uh, it's originally performed by Northeast England miners. Five dancers form a circle holding flexible metal swords called rapper swords, and then they dance around each other, weaving the swords together into shapes. It's like river dance meets cat's cradle, but at the end, someone gets stabbed. I don't know. There is no joy in that dance. The Rachel. Emma. Oh, this is a hairstyle. That is a hairstyle. <laughs> Rachel Green from Friends made that popular, very 90s. How about the Ferrandoyle? Emma. Dance move? Dance is correct. <laughs> <laughs> the Ferrandoyle is a traditional folk dance uh, popular in Provence, France. The Sphinx. Vivian. Yoga. That is a yoga pose, yes. The happy baby. Vivian. Yoga. That is a yoga pose, correct. <laughs> the only one I can do. Me too. That's a good one. <laughs> the full wheel. The full wheel. Vivian. Yoga move. Yoga pose is correct, yes. And this is your last clue, the Carolina shag. Vivian. That's got to be a dance move, right? That is a dance oh. move, yes. <laughs> Originated in Myrtle Beach, now basically considered a main form of swing dance. Well done. Let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung. How did our contestants do? They both did amazing, but Vivian, congratulations. You're moving on to the final round. Coming up, we'll talk to Jeff Goldblum about Jeff Goldblum. And we'll dare Jonathan Colton to play a music parody game in the company of the master himself, Weird Al Yankovic. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Care.com, who wants you to know that if you paid $2,000 or more a year for a nanny, then you're responsible for nanny taxes. Care.com slash homepay is a comprehensive resource for busy families that can handle all of your employer payroll obligations, from setting up automatic payments to preparing tax returns. Go to Care.com slash homepay to learn more and get a free consultation. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Capital One, creator of the CreditWise app that gives you your credit score and real insights on how to improve it. CreditWise is free to everyone, whether you're a Capital One customer or not. You can check your credit score anytime you want right in the app. Download the CreditWise app for free today. Availability depends on the presence of credit history from TransUnion. CreditWise is offered by Capital One Bank, USA, N.A. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm your host, Ophira Eisenberg, and we are coming to you this week from the theater at Ace Hotel in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> Now, please welcome our guest, the new band leader on the IFC talk show, Comedy Bang Bang, Weird Al Yankovic. (laughs) 
This is your first job in 20 years? <laughs> well, not my first job, but my first, uh, I guess, first day job yeah. where I had to, like, wake up and be someplace <laughs> yeah. at the same time. Are for... you looking forward to uh, getting a W-2? Ooh, that's oh. going to be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, uh, on the show, what's your dynamic with Scott Ackerman? How would you describe it? Well, you know, I'm, I'm uh, filling in the large uh, shoes of Reggie Watts and Kid Cudi. They did the first four seasons, and uh, they uh, amazing, amazing job. Uh, you know, Reggie's like the gold standard. I don't think anybody can really uh, achieve that level, but I give it my best shot. I try to emulate as much as I can what they did and bring my own thing to it. And uh, I got to say it was really, really a blast. I had a great time, and, uh, you know, I hope everybody enjoys the fifth season. So, obviously, you are the, the master of parodies. So what are some of your favorite reactions from musicians when they have heard their parody song? Um, I, I've heard Lady Gaga call it a rite of passage. Uh, uh, yeah. Kurt Cobain said that he didn't realize he'd made it until he heard the Weird Al parody. That was nice. That's nice, uh, yeah. Chame Chameleon Air came up to me at the, uh, at the Grammys on the red carpet and said that uh, he, he, th he thanked me because he said, I won my Grammy for Rap Song of the Year because you did the parody. You made it undeniable. So when you listen to music, is it still enjoyable? Is your brain constantly kind of doing the math of like how you could rewrite it? Well, I, not always. I mean, I always listen to the radio going, hmm, how can I screw this one up? <laughs> I enjoy music. I'm a fan. I like to listen for fun. And every now and then, you know, uh, the voices in my head will force me to do things against my will. And now that, you know, there's YouTube, obviously people like to try to do their own parody. Has that made your job a lot harder? Well, it, it makes it more challenging because I'm not the only game in town anymore. Because yeah. any, any uh, song that comes out, if it's halfway popular, there's already 10,000 parodies of it on YouTube. Uh, and it, it makes me not go for the low-hanging fruit. I can't go for the most obvious idea. Like, right. if, like if Beat It came out in 2016, there would be a million Eat It parodies, right? So I, I have to go for uh, an idea that's a little more outside the box. Like, like I, I did a parody of uh, Blurred Lines called Word Crimes. Yeah. And, uh, oh, thank you. But, but my parody came out like a year after the original Robin Thicke song. And by, in that time, there had been thousands of parodies based on how the Robin Thicke song was, you know, misogynistic and right. kind of creepy. And I thought, well, you know, I can't go down that road. But, you know, I don't think anybody's done a parody of the song talking about the proper usage of grammar. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to think a little outside the box. That's right. You know, we, we have you on a game show, but I know you have some experience in game shows because in 1994, you were on Wheel of Fortune. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> you did very well. You were on this week with incredible people, Lee Greenwood, uh, Little Richard, and James Brown. That's right, yeah. In 1994, my manager calls me up and says, hey, you got an invitation to be on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. And I said, yeah, it sounds pretty cheesy. I don't think I want to do that. And he said, you'd be playing with James Brown and Little Richard. And I said, I'm there. <laughs> I'm on a flight. We're, you know, so we went to Orlando, Florida, and you know, before the show, they, they do the indoctrination, they make sure you know how to play the game, you do a practice round, uh, and we all went through our practice, and James Brown showed up like a half an hour late with his 20-person entourage, so they had to go through all the steps with him you know, on his own. So I'm watching in the green room on a monitor, I'm watching James Brown learn how to play Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> now, it became immediately apparent that not only had James Brown never seen Wheel of Fortune, he'd apparently never heard of the game Hangman. It was a whole <laughs> alien concept to him. So he's going through the steps, he spins the wheel, and it finally lands, and he goes, uh, give me an A. And the producer says, um, no, no, James, when you spin the wheel, you have to pick a consonant. And he goes, oh, ah, uh, Europe. <laughs> and it was kind of downhill from there. <laughs> so he, he did not win. I he did not it. win, he, no. <laughs> is that show, in terms of the questions, is it harder or easier than ours, would you say? Uh, it's exactly the same as your show. It's exactly the same. Good. <laughs> Great. Weird Al Yankovic, would you like to help us with a music game? Well, I don't know. Okay, fine. All right. All right. Weird Al Yankovic, everybody. Hey, contestants. See, you didn't know what game you were going to be in ahead of time. Nope. Pretty psyched, right? Prayed mm -hmm. for this all my life. You prayed for this all your life? <laughs> this, this specific thing? It's a weird... Big Weird Al fan. <laughs> Public radio... Dreams. <laughs> Think about it. At the end of your dream, there's a funding drive. 
<laughs> this is the brain that brought you great dreams like went to school without pants on <laughs> and teeth breaking and falling out of your head. If you want these kinds of dreams to continue, Just keep, we need your support it going, now. Keep it going. Preetha Ogden, you, wait a second, have a Lord of the Rings inspired wedding ring? I did. I, I do. You do? Yes. <laughs> I yeah. thought you were going to say wedding, which I did, but you said ring, which I do. So okay, both good. work. <laughs> yeah. I was worried. I was like, wow, things didn't go well oh God, between no, this here. question okay. and <laughs> you getting on the stage. So, wait, is it the one ring? You know, it's not. Okay. <laughs> the one ring belongs to one special someone, and unfortunately, that wasn't me. It's the great Lord Sauron. Yeah. Got it. Yes. You're very deep in this. I get it. What can I say? Your opponent is Ian Kamaklang. You are... Trying to learn one musical instrument from every family? Yeah, just about. I sort of taught myself guitar in college, and uh, I, I started learning violin, and I'm still taking lessons. You're learning violin now? Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> it's going okay. I just need to, you know, practice more. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to pick from percussion? <laughs> steel drum. Actually, steel drum is a good steel one. Steel drum. Learn, yeah. Why not just go with, like, an egg or something like that? Yeah. A shaky egg? <laughs> I do have one of those egg shakers. See? Make it yeah. easy. <laughs> this is a music game. It's our tribute to the late, great David Bowie. And we are excited to bring Weird Al and Jonathan Colton together. It's like having diamonds and adding more diamonds. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't think of any better way to honor Bowie's legacy than by doing song parodies on a trivia show. <laughs> exactly. It's how it's, he wanted it's it. what he would have wanted. It's what yeah, he wanted. Absolutely. <laughs> we took the song Starman... And change the lyrics to be about movies where aliens come to Earth. You're welcome, David Bowie. <laughs> Just buzz in to tell us the name of the movie that we're singing about, and the winner will be uh, abducted <laughs> to our final round at the end of the show. Alien joke. You ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. Didn't know what time it was when we lost our ride Strange castle where I brought my bride Some cat and fishnets welcomed us inside Name is Frank, he said Preta Independence Day Resurgence <laughs> That's a very pandery answer, but it is incorrect Ian <laughs> Do you know the answer? Uh, is it the Rocky Horror Picture Show? It absolutely is. Well done. New York party starts out as fun. Record on my camera. The lights are done. That weren't no earthquake. That's a giant monster run. Preta. Cloverfield. Yeah, you got it. There are Vogons waiting in the sky. Don't panic, Ford and Arthur left before Earth went bye-bye. Ian? Uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> They're in vain. Keep them at bay Jack Nicholson's the press And even he can save the day We've got to Blame it on Tim Burton Blame it on Tim Burton This one is on Tim Burton <laughs> Ian uh, Mars Attacks That's right <laughs> We had to call someone So I picked on you Who, who have to help stop these damn kaiju who, who. So take this rookie and this Jaeger and pull Asia through. Uh, kaiju doesn't do it for you, huh? Mm. It's filmed by Guillermo del Toro. It's the only time <laughs> Jaeger did something good. <laughs> Does anybody know the answer? Pacific Rim is what we were oh. looking for. That's right. There's something strange about my new Camaro. 
contains a spot and it can change its form and so I will join in and help the Autobot strike a blow. Ian. Uh, Transformers. Transformers, you got it. <laughs> Massive robot falls from outer space. A nine-year-old befriends him as he seeks to find his place. Preta. Super 8. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. Ian, do you know the answer? Uh, the Iron Giant? Yeah, that's right. Iron Giant. I felt the crowd got a little violent there, Preta. I don't want you to take <laughs> that <real> personally. <laughs> How dare you confuse Super 8 <laughs> with so, Iron I'm Giant, so you sorry. monster. I, I, Terrible person. The role Vin Diesel was born to play. <laughs> Can you hear that five tone music phrase? Obsessed with Devil's Tower. No, this isn't just a phase. Just watch me sculpt my mashed potatoes. Sculpt my mashed potatoes. I sculpt my mashed potatoes. Ian. <laughs> Uh, close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's exactly right. <laughs> Till the day I die, I will never forget Weird Al plaintively singing, I sculpt my mashed potatoes. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> this that's... is important. This means something. <laughs> Ophira, I wasn't counting. How did our contestants do? Uh, our contestants did great, but it seems that Ian will be moving on to our final round at the end of the show. You can catch Weird Al on his mandatory world tour, taking him to 80 cities. The dates are all at weirdal.com. Let's hear it one more time for Weird Al Yankovic. We've got new contestants. Daniel Gibbons, you are an entertainment lawyer. Yes, I am. And you will go to any extent to be properly dressed for dinner. Yes. Oh, yes. What does that mean? Yes. Oh. What does that mean? Um, I got invited to a dinner with uh, Angela Lansbury, who was one of the guests that I was eating with. Yeah. And I, at the time, I was, act, I was uh, working backstage at a show, and... The show was set in a department store, and I didn't have anything to wear to this very fancy dinner. So I borrowed a, a tuxedo from one of the mannequins on set. No kidding. And yeah. how was the dinner? Delicious. Totally delicious. delicious. Yeah. Your opponent is Craig Russell. You work packaging American TV for international audiences. How is U.S. television different the way the international audiences consume U.S. television? Well, comedy doesn't really translate that easily, so it's always the dramas or the actions that make it overseas, but right. not so much the comedy. They dub them, too, a lot, right? We dub them or subtitle them, yeah. A neat anecdote that uh, the voice for two of married people, the voices that do them in France, actually fell in love and married each other. For what show? The Simpsons. No way. <laughs> <laughs> The two actors that Homer were Homer and Marge that do the voices of French Marge and French Homer. They married, actually fell in love? And got married. See, that, that's how you know they don't get the humor. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, what's a texting abbreviation that you would personally like to see exist? I would like to be able to use IWAM for I'm watching a movie. Because even if I'm yes. not, it gives me a couple hours to respond. Even if I'm not. <laughs> You know you get texts. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Craig, how about you? What's a texting abbreviation you think should exist? Uh, SIT, it's a LA thing. Stuck in traffic. Stuck in traffic. <laughs> SIT. Yeah, that doesn't exist yet either. And that buys you, what, four or seven hours? <laughs> this game combines two of LA's favorite pastimes spotting celebrities and texting while driving. So we've mashed up the names of famous people with common text messaging abbreviations. Let's go to our puzzle guru, Archung, to give us an example. If I said you'll be laughing out loud when you hang out with this rapper and NCIS Los Angeles actor, you'd answer L-O-L-L -L Cool J. 
So every celebrity's name will have an initial or two at the beginning. In real life, this author of scary books for kids isn't that spooky. Daniel. I R L Stein. Exactly. F my life is what this writer may have said if he were alive when HBO released the documentary Going Clear. Daniel. F M L Ron Hubbard. That's right. Few celebrities have probably uttered that phrase. <laughs> I'm going to get kicked out of LA. I know.、Yeah. Can't say that here. <laughs> Just kidding. This Canadian singer is such a jokester. She tells people she wrote the song "Hallelujah" and then says, "Actually, Leonard Cohen did." Craig. J. K. D. Lang. Yes, indeed. It's no big deal to clone dinosaurs for this Chinese American actor, who also played a fair share of doctors throughout his career. Daniel. N. B. D. Wong. You got it. Oh my God! First, Richard Nixon asks you to tap a few wires and break into one or two hotels. Next thing you know, you're in federal prison for four years. Craig. O M G. Gordon Liddy. Yes. <laughs> Too much information. This architect designed the Louvre Pyramid, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and the Museum of Islamic Art in Qatar. Craig. T M I M P. That's right. Wow. <laughs> This is your last clue. Best friends forever. You love Jay Gatsby so much, you want to be besties with the author who created him. Daniel. B F F Scott Fitzgerald. That's right. Puzzle Guru Art Chung, how did our contestants do? What a hard game, but they both did great. But Daniel did a little bit better. Congratulations! You're moving on to the final round. OMG, IDK, what you're waiting for? Come LOL with AMA and be here IRL. I O W. Fill out a contestant form at amatickets.org ASAP. T I A N T T F N. Coming up, will we be talking to Jeff Goldblum and Micah Monroe from Independence Day Resurgence? Will aliens conquer Earth? Will it ever rain in Los Angeles? So many things are possible. So stay tuned. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message come from Care.com, who wants you to know that if you paid two thousand dollars or more a year for a nanny, then you're responsible for nanny taxes. Care.com/slash/homepay is a comprehensive resource for busy families that can handle all of your employer payroll obligations, from setting up automatic payments to preparing tax returns. Go to Care.com/slash/homepay to learn more and get a free consultation. Are you the kind of person that responds to peer pressure? Like, if I tell you to do something dicey, will you do it? Okay, what if I ask you to do something that you know is actually good, like helping to support public radio where you live? That's a good thing. You could just go to stations.npr.org, find your local station, donate a few bucks, and tell them we sent you. You could even become a monthly contributor. Ah, again, that's stations.npr.org. And thank you. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm your host, Ophira Eisenberg, and this week we are coming to you from the Theater at Ace Hotel in Los Angeles, California. Now, please welcome our special guests from the movie Independence Day Resurgence: Jeff Goldblum and Micah Monroe. I, I loved you in so many things. I loved you in, in Wes Anderson's、uh, The Grand Budapest Hotel. Thank you, Ophira. 
I was very lucky to be in those movies. Wes Anderson is fantastic. And I watched an interview where you said working on that movie, you gave it a rating of 10 gold blooms out of 10 gold blooms. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just wondering, how does the gold bloom rating system work? It's from my gizzard. It's from my gut. This interview already has 10 out of a possible oh, thank 10 you. gold yeah. blooms. So, yeah. Well, you just had a child, I, I think, four months ago. Lucas, I, I, we, I had yes. a baby ten months ago on Independence Day, on the 4th of July. Fourth his of name July. is Yeah, thank you. You didn't know that? <laughs> yeah, his name is Charlie Ocean. He's at home right now. And, that uh, wasn't a publicity stunt for the movie, though. No, that was just... it certainly was. It happened very naturally. Yeah, I know. And it was the due date, and she had it on the due oh, date. Oh, she's, per that she's a How perfectionist. You... Yeah, she did okay. <laughs> yeah. She's a gymnast. She's from Canada, and I know you're from Canada. I am from Canada. Uh, how about that? I love, uh, yeah, I love those Canadians. Yeah. Really good. But how are you doing at four months? I know the whole thing so far. Just my first and oh, your yeah. first. Yeah, I'm but losing my mind. You are? Yeah. He was sleeping through the night. I don't want to brag, but I think we're lucky. At four months, he was sleeping all through uh, the okay. night. Okay, Lucas is teaching CrossFit, okay? Uh. <laughs> Mike and Monroe, not a lot of actors get their start as a professional kite boarder. Yes. What is kite boarding? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Have you seen wakeboarding? Before. Y yes. yes. Okay, so very similar to that, but instead of getting pulled by a boat, it's a kite, and so you have to control the kite. You can get super big air and tricks. and. Yeah. Okay, so how did you get into kiteboarding? Um, my dad taught me. My dad's actually here tonight, oh. which is very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, my, my dad started when I was about 11 years old. And I kept telling her, I'm like, I want to learn, I want to learn, because no other girls were doing it at the time as well. So I was like, I want to be the badass chick out there. And so finally at 13, um, he taught me. And after school every day, he'd pick me up and we'd go to the beach. Yes, yeah, slowly progressed. And we started taking trips everywhere. And yeah, it was very cool. How do you go from professional competitive kiteboarder to an acting career? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how. I was living in the Dominican Republic training and when I when I was leaving I said look I'll send in audition tapes for for movies that I really like or projects that I want to do but besides that my my focus is on kiteboarding and that's what I want to do so I sent it in then the director happened to see it and I mean just by by chance ended up booking it it was with um Dennis Quaid and Zac Efron Ramin Barani the director of it it was just kind of changed my life forever so it was very so cool. right then you you put something on tape send it away I mean it was you know like two three weeks took time yeah sure, yeah, sure. yeah yeah time two three <laughs> weeks took time uh, some of us <laughs> translate that into like 30 years, but I, yes. um, so was your first audition, did you need, uh, like commercial auditions mm, or anything yeah, like that? Yeah. Like for what? <clears throat> Pizza Hut? Pizza Hut. Was it your first audition? Uh, I don't know if it was my first. But it was right in the beginning. It was in the beginning. And then, yeah, then I, I booked a Purina dog food. Listen, <laughs> did you have to eat the product in <laughs> Pizza Hut? <laughs> and Purina. Purina. Uh, yes, yes, I did. How did that go? <laughs> I don't know if this is too much information, but they, they had a, um, a spit bucket oh, yeah. next to me, so you spit it, you chew, and you yep. spit it out. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the good that's stuff. That's a good... really appetizing moment for the next bite. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the movie Independence Day Resurgence. The aliens are back. Mm -hmm. Jeff Goldblum, you were reprising your role as David Levinson, the scientist who figured out how to beat the aliens in the first Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've played a lot of roles yes. with aliens. Some, yeah. yeah. Yes. You've even been an alien yes, in am. Earth Girls Are Easy. Now, yes, did I that... Am. Being cast as an alien, has that informed you at all how to kill aliens in the future That's movies? That's a good question. That is yeah, a good did you question. figure out their weakness? Very good question. Um, no. No. <laughs> no. No. In the trailer, you say the aliens always like to get the landmarks. Yeah, yeah. Why do aliens always go after monuments? Well, the first time, I think they were 20 years ago, you know, they, uh, they destroyed the White House. Yeah. And I think they were, they must have known something about the leadership, right? And, <laughs> well, I don't mean any particular leadership, sure, no. but I mean, you know, and how they would get to us, you know, and all that. Uh, in this... I'm, I, I don't want to give anything away. No, please. But, but it is, it's alluded to visually and textually in the trailer. So the new ones come down in a ship that's, you know, the last ones were as big as, you know, uh, a city. 
This one, it's much, much bigger. There's one that comes down. Yes, if you didn't gather it from the trailer, if you've seen that, it's the size of, should I say, the, like the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. And as it's coming to do its dirty business, I won't give that away exactly, it, as I say in the trailer, it has its own gravity. So whole <laughs> cities, whole mm. cities on mm. its wet journey get sucked up off of their roots, their foundations, lifted up, floated up with the har har screaming billions of people in them har horribly and then what I say in the trailer what goes up must come down they fall on must other come cities down. yep it's a spectacle palooza of destruction that only Roland Emmerich could uh, yeah yeah uh, Micah you star with Jeff Goldblum in Independence Day as the president's daughter you were the mm. next generation sure am. now you were what three years old when I was left? two. You were two? Yes. When uh, Independence Day came sure out. Sure was. Have you seen the movie? No. You've not seen the movie? I'm joking. Are you kidding me? Of course I've seen it. I've seen it, and I've what, seen it like at least maybe 15 to 17 times. 15 to 17 it's, it's times. It's a good movie. Yeah, you yeah, like it. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay. So, Jeff, 20 years later, when you walked on set this time, what was different about it? It was bigger. I think the I think the budget and the, and the uh, mm. scope of the first one was not as, uh, let alone the alien ships, uh, w w was not as big as this one. So we were in Albuquerque and we had sound stage five or six sound stages, and you went on and you saw sets that were built uh, that looked like you know big you know big stuff. So that you actually big. have sets being built. Yeah, you had sets, and then we had all these you know uh, um, special effects and green screen stuff and ways of cluing us in on what they would finally look like that were a little more advanced, and those were were you know more spectacular. And but same director, Roland Emmerich, you sure. know, but much more in his. Uh, uh, period of mastery now. Uh, some of the returning cast was the same. Judd Hirsch plays my father. He's back delightfully. I love him. And uh, Bill Pullman, who plays the ex-president now in a very interesting way, is back. And many uh, two uh, other people, too numerous to mention, but uh, you know, like that. So a lot of special effects are added afterwards. So does it actually force you to be a better actor because it's, it's kind of closer to theater? I would absolutely say so, yeah. Yes, you have to use your imagination. Yeah. It's not like The Revenant or something, I imagine, where you're in actual, you know, you're horrible it, yeah. things. And go, yeah, it's, it's, it's made up, and you're, so you're pretending. You're on the moon, but you're not. Right. And you're, and you're seeing aliens, but you're not. But you, you're not. You've you got to pretend. So what, what is standing in for the alien? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, we had the writers would, would talk over the, the writers. microphones. They would talk and describe what we were seeing. <laughs> the writers would stand there for you. No. But, there's a, but there's a scene not unlike the one in the first one where an alien has got somebody and they're channeling their voice and thoughts through that person. And so they had an eye line where you could see what they were going to put in. But then they had a tentacle or two. Just one tentacle. A tentacle. Wrapping around with a puppet guy, you know, making, making oh, so creepy gross. things like so that. Fun. It's fun. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I am so looking forward to seeing this masterpiece with the two of you. But right now, speaking of masterpieces, Jeff Goldblum, Micah Monroe, are you ready for your Ask Me Another Challenge? Oh, goodness. I'm scared. Yes, you would. <laughs> yes. Very, very well. <laughs> Let's bring back our puzzle guru, Art Chung, and house musician, Jonathan Colton. So the original Independence Day has one of the best inspirational movie speeches ever, delivered by President Bill Pullman. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Very stirring. Ophira and I are going to read you our version of that speech. Oh, goodness. Which we've rewritten to be about other holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Suck us. Pre <laughs> don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't okay, okay. Yourself. Okay. Just buzz in when you know which holiday we're speaking about, and bonus points if you answer in the style of Bill Pullman. Ooh. Uh, today we celebrate our Independence Day. But, of course, you would replace Independence Day with the correct answer. Yes. Are you ready? Oh, goodness. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. It's going to be great. Good morning. In less than an hour, bouquets from sustainably sourced florists will join heart-shaped fair trade chocolate boxes from around the world. And you will be hugging the largest teddy bear in the history of mankind. Micah. 
Today we celebrate our Valentine's Day. Yes. Mangrove. That word should have new meaning for all of us today. Deciduous, evergreen. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We must be united on the last Friday in April in our common interest in planting trees. Oh, it's Micah. Today we celebrate our Arbor Day. Absolutely. I bow to you. I sit at your feet. I wouldn't have known that in a million years. How do you know that? I went to school. I don't know. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. I think maybe you'll know this one. Let's see. Perhaps it is fate that today is the 14th of June, and you will once again be flying that piece of cloth, perhaps not really designed by Betsy Roths, but by any number of Philadelphian banner makers. <coughs> Jeff. Today we celebrate our flag day. Yes! <laughs> I tell you, I was not sure of the answer until I started to speak. I was thinking out loud. I was thinking out loud. We're fighting for our right to cram into malls for mediocre deals. <laughs> to buy Christmas and Hanukkah presents way too early. Micah. Today we celebrate our Black Friday day. Yes, we do. Yeah. I know that one. And should we win the day, the 17th of March will no longer be known as an Irish holiday, but as the day the world declared in one voice... We will go decorate with four-leaf clovers. We will wake up with massive hangovers. Today we celebrate our St. Patrick's Day. Yes! Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much. Mm -hmm. There's one more. There's one more. Okay, okay this is it. I think this it's... It. If my count is right, I'm ahead by two. Is that correct? <laughs> We're going to brunch on. We're going to hug our moms. Jeff. Ah, uh, what is uh, Today we celebrate our, our Mother's Day. That's right. <laughs> Victory dances all around. Puzzleger Archung, how did our special guest do? Technically, Micah won, but really we're all winners, so you're both going to get <laughs> Ask Me Another Rubik's Cubes. <laughs> Congratulations. Independence Day Resurgence comes out June 24th. Let's hear it one more time for Jeff Goldblum and Micah Monroe. Now we're going to crown this week's big winner. Let's bring back Dorian, Vivian, Ian, and Daniel to play our final round. Puzzleger Archung, take it away. Thank you, Ophira. We're closing this show like any good TV episode or movie with an emotional ending. Every answer in this round will contain a word that is also a feeling or emotion. So for example, if I said, it's an app where feathered animals are flung across the screen at piggies, you would say, angry birds. We're playing the spelling bee style, so one wrong answer and you're out. You only have a few seconds to give me that answer, and the last person standing is our big winner. Your prize is an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube and a bag of Independence Day Resurgence swag from Fox. Here we go. Dorian, this word describes a group of lions. Pride. A pride of lions, that is correct. <laughs> Vivian, the video for this Pharrell Williams hit song features people dancing all through Los Angeles. Happy. That is happy, correct. <laughs> Ian, Anne Hathaway won an Oscar for her role in the movie version of this musical set in France. Three seconds. Shaking your head. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, step aside, Ian. Let's see if Daniel knows the answer. Les Miserables? That is correct. We have to say goodbye to Ian. Thank you. <laughs> Dorian, this ABC drama took place on Wisteria Lane. Uh, Desperate Housewives. Desperate is the emotion. Thank you. <laughs> Vivian is the nickname for a pirate's black flag featuring a skull and crossbones. Sorry, do you have an answer? No. Nope. No, okay, step aside. We're back to Daniel. Uh, Jolly Roger? Jolly Roger is correct. We have to say goodbye to Vivian. We are quickly down to two players, Dorian and Daniel. Dorian, this game show hosted by Joe Rogan made contestants lie down in tubs full of insects. 
I hated that show. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh... Can you conjure the name? No. No, you can't. All right, let's step aside. Daniel, if you know the answer to this, you're our big winner. Fear Factor. That is correct. <laughs> Congratulations, Daniel. You are a big winner. Well done. That's our show. Thank you so much for playing for bonus games and stuff that's too hot for radio. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our podcast on Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Come see us live or be a contestant. Go to amatickets.org. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Mark Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Now, Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles were written by Juan Escalante, Carol Lee, and senior writers Kyle Beakley and Karen Lurie. Ask Me Others produced by Kiana Fitzgerald, Mike Katzeff, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, and Denny Shin, along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore. Ask Me Other was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our media partner, Southern California Public Radio 89.3 KPCC. Point three nine eighty CPKC. The theater at Ace Hotel in Los Angeles. Hatch the Teetotaler. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm Harite Begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. As the year winds down, NPR podcasts are popping up on the best of 2016 lists from iTunes, The New York Times, Vulture, and more. When you're ready for a break, find the good stuff on the NPR One app or visit npr.org slash podcasts. Next time, Ask Me Another's in Nashville with country musician Martina McBride, NPR music critic Ann Powers, and actor Connie Britton. And Connie confirms what we've all been wondering. Do you have fans, and potentially even strangers, ask you to be their mom? Yeah. <laughs> Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, for NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games, and Trivia.